<laughs> next time, my next smear test, glitter. Yeah. <laughs> so I got my first letter for mm. my smear test from my doctor when I was 25. In fact, it was two weeks before I turned 25. Yeah, exactly the same for me. Oh, when it yeah. came through, I was like, I'm a woman. Yeah, I was like, oh, great birthday present. <laughs> <to> go off <laughs> for a smear. <laughs> Um, so I booked it straight away. I have had STI checks in the past and I knew mm. it was going to be quite similar to that. Yeah. Kind of the same routine and I wasn't that nervous. Mm -hmm. So I went along and my results came back abnormal, which then led to the whole process of me having colposcopies, um, let's treatment to try and get rid of mm. my precancerous cells on my cervix. Yeah, it was exactly the same for me. So when I was about 21 years old, I went to um, the doctor because I was getting some symptoms which were um, pointing towards, you know, like cervical cancer okay. and that sort of thing. Just what like? like? Spotting, like okay. in periods and things like that. So I went to the doctor and I asked if I could have a smear test. Okay. But um, they said because of my age, I was only 21 and you're not supposed to have them until you're 25. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I waited and two weeks before my 25th birthday, <laughs> I got mm. a letter. So it's like, happy birthday, it's time for your yeah. smear test, which I was like, oh. You're now an but, adult. Yeah, so I was dreading it a bit. <laughs> so were you like embarrassed about going for your smear because I wasn't at all. And the only concern I had was like what do I wear? Do I wear jeans? So I wear, should I wear a long yeah. skirt so I can roll it up? Like I don't really know and then I think do I leave skirt. my socks on? Do I take yeah. them off? And I, was, I had all these things going around in my head so I was a bit yeah. like all over the place with it but yeah, yeah I was just more worried it would hurt. I, <laughs> I was worried about the pain for sure. I wasn't at all embarrassed about my vagina. Yeah. I was a bit like, shall I shave, shouldn't I? Yeah, like, what's the that. process? <laughs> but they see it all all day, every day, yeah. these people that are doing the smear test. Yeah, exactly. And the whole like grooming thing are like, do I, I don't want to look like I've tried too hard, but yeah. like, um, you know, it's not like, yeah. you know, it's my first time meeting somebody or, yeah. you know, but. Also, it's a very daunting, intimate thing. Like, even with a partner, you don't just sit there with your legs open and have them stare at yeah. in between like, like your big legs. lamp that they just pull yeah down it's like, it's oh. very intimate and yeah. I think that freaks a lot of girls out I've got friends who have said you know I'm a bit worried about going because and even bikini waxes and things like that yeah they're worried about what they look like down there and do they look like all the other ones that these like nurses or waxes are gonna see and yeah I it's true like I don't know what any of my friends no it's not the sort of thing that you just look like <laughs> <laughs> I only know my own so yeah it, it, I can't I understand how that can be really worrying going for your smear being like am I normal but you know what I found no woman is the same no. everyone is unique in their own right and so I think to remember that whilst you're going for your smear yeah will stop any embarrassment and we've got some props haven't we Should I'm we so them? excited about this so this is the um it's not like a what's it called a, spe a speculum there are two different sizes this one's a normal one and this one is the virgin one. I actually, I think, yeah. asked for the virgin one on my first time just because I was so nervous. nervous. Yeah, and you can ask for the smaller one. I read a story once about this woman who used her like toddler's flannel, play flannel, to clean up a bit before her smear <laughs> test and she got there and she realised she was covered in glitter. Oh, no. And the gynaecologist was a bit like, whoa, you've made a... Extra special, yeah. <laughs> extra special effort. Yeah. So and now we're jazzle. <laughs> next time, my next smear test, glitter. Yeah. <laughs> I got a letter two weeks later, and I thought when I got it, it was quite a chunky letter. So I thought, oh, this is not good news. It said that I had it's called severe dyscariosis. I think is how you say it, but that's okay. like the most. So you can have like mild, moderate, or severe. Yeah. And mine was like the worst. And they time. could tell that just from your first smear. Just from my smear. Wow. Yeah, I don't know how. It so must have been thought, petrifying. Yeah, I was really scared because I thought, oh my gosh, this is my first one. Like, how long yeah. has it been like that for? If you know, and um, especially because I'd wanted a, a smear test earlier on in life when I was about 21. I thought, you know, what if all these like last four years it's been getting worse and worse? Mm. Did you get the letter? You got it through letter or phone call? Yeah, I I think I got a letter through yeah. um, saying that there were abnormalities, mm -hmm. and I freaked out. I panicked. I'm a, I think I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. I yeah, worry I about <laughs> everything and then obviously you get onto Google and you're like oh, what's happened what does that mean what? Yeah. like but I booked in for my colposcopy straight after I remember them sending me like pamphlets about what? a colposcopy and yeah. what was going to happen yeah. Um but yeah I was petrified yeah so I'm guessing I ha I have had HPV as well haven't I yeah I think it did, it said CN3 in my 
Yeah, so CN3 is to do with the cell changes, I think. So that's the worst, worst. kind. So that's the same as what I had as well. Yeah. Um, but then when they do a pap smear, they um, you'll sometimes get a result where it will say you also tested positive for HPV, um, right. which I think, I'm going to try and say this, stands for the human papilloma, papilloma, virus. papilloma virus. Basically, they think like 80 to 90% of people who are sexually active will have it at some point in their lives. But your body can get rid of it yeah. by itself over the course of two years. Yeah, so that's why they don't really check for it in like STI checks or anything like that because your immune system will just mm. um, fight it off but there are so many different strains of it and a few of the strains can cause um, the precancer cells and I think like pretty much all cervical cancer cases will have been um, triggered and caused by HPV. I think though it's nothing to be ashamed about. Like, no definitely not. You, it's, you don't just get it from sexual contact it is sometimes just skin to skin, skin contact to skin, as yeah. well so you're probably going to be exposed to it at some point in your life anyway so basically don't freak out that your partner is cheating on you yeah definitely not the just case come up with this yeah. that isn't the case at all you can catch it yeah. a number of ways so i took my men with me to my colposcopy and they said they were going to take some biopsies but on the on the camera the nurse could actually see that yeah. there were like potentially precancerous cells there from the color changes and the the like yeah. lotion that they brought not lotion <laughs> What's the the dye? It's like vinegar. It's something. like some sort of liquid. It sting. It stings a little bit, but it's not terrible. Yeah. So they could see, and they said to me, "Right, you can have the let's treatment here right now." <gasps> wow. So I didn't get any time to prepare for that. So, so you had it straight away. Yeah. So in my first colposcopy, they they said, "Yeah, I think you know, instead of getting you back in, have the let's treatment." Mm -hmm. um, which is basically, I can't remember what let stands for. It's like electronic Le loop. Yeah. I think so they kind of zap them off. I took my mum with me. She was looking at the screen. Yeah. She was fascinated with like watching my cervix and I didn't want to have any part of that. I don't want to see. Yeah. I think it would have made me freak out a bit more. Yeah. But the nurse was like, look, you've got a, f a pretty flower pattern on your cervix. And I was like, that means it's bad. Like, yeah. Something you don't odd. want the pattern, you do want nice clear yeah. <laughs> sort of screen. And then when they're doing the removal of the bad cells, it just feels like bad period, period pain. pain. I would recommend as well taking a sanitary towel along with you just in case yeah. there is bleeding. For the colposcopy and let's, they'll 100% be bleeding afterwards. Yeah, definitely. My, mine, was, I was bleeding for a long, oh, and there's stuff like, you can't have a bath after for like a month. Yeah, you or, can't, and you can't have sex for a long yeah. time after you have a let's treatment. And a colposcopy as well. I think it's six, six weeks. weeks you can't have um, sex for afterwards. Um, or a bath. I just or missed bath. the bath. I missed the bath as well. I really did. I was like, all you want after you've had something like that done is just yeah. a nice warm bath to make you feel better. Yeah. From beginning to end, from like my first smear test till when I got the all clear, mm -hmm. it was about two years. Yeah, same for me. It was yeah. a long process. Yeah. After that let's treatment, then you wait three months again for a smear. But then I was quite unlucky because on my follow-up smear to that one, they hadn't quite got enough cells um, on the, so it's actually this little thing. What's so this what? is what goes in when you have a smear test. Um, and they kind of wiggle it around like that to collect all the cells on the end of here. It's like a little brush. About two years after it all kind of started, I finally got a result back that said, okay, now you're all clear now and you don't have to come and see us again for three years. And I was oh, so relieved. It's the best feeling. I was so relieved, it? yeah. I thought it was never gonna end. Yeah. My next smear is coming up perhaps this year. Oh, really? And I'm excited. You're excited, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm just praying for the same results. Yeah, but if there was um, bad results, I know what to expect now. Yeah. So I wouldn't be frightened yeah. about it. I would just, you know. I and would we're still here. Yeah. It's so much easier than um, not going at all and then mm -hmm. finding out too late that you have got cancerous cells on your cervix. Yeah. I think a lot of people were like, oh, it's never gonna happen to me. Like yeah. it's my first smear test. I can just delay it and put it off. But we are both living examples that we went to our first smear test mm -hmm. and came back with abnormalities. Yeah. It's so important. It could save your life and Definitely. it's over so quickly. Hey, it's okay to have a smear test and find out you've got abnormal results. It's really nothing to worry about. The doctors know what they're doing and it's much better to have a smear test and find out you've got abnormal cells there than to not have mm -hmm. one and not know what's going on. If you like this video, please be sure to share and comment down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Glamour's YouTube channel.